Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob and in this video we are going to be making a simple stopwatch with three controls, start, stop, and reset. Okay, so let's get started. Alright, this is what I have for the HTML. Pretty simple. Stopwatch, div class equals stopwatch. That contains the whole thing. We have a control section with three buttons, start, stop, reset, and a display section with the minutes, the seconds, and the centiseconds. Okay, using I'm using SCSS, which is SAS, and we're using a little bit of JavaScript too. Okay, so I am going to, okay, so that's what we're starting with. And we're going to start out with the SAS. So everything is inside of the stop wa watch wrapper. And I'm just going to put the entire layout in the SAS right now, or most of it. So we have controls, um, buttons, start. Stop. Reset. Okay. We have display. And we'll get to this in just a second. Okay, so this is our layout. That's what we have right now. And we're going to start doing a little bit of styling. First, I'm going to set the back. Oh, we'll make this set the width first. Width 300 pixels. Background color of 0A. 0AF. Okay. Border radius of 5 pixels. And box shadow um, 00. I don't know. 4 pixels. RGBA. Um, okay, one box to shadow, and I'm going to give it two because reasons. It makes it look nice. RGBA, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.15. That one's uh, more faint. You can kind of see it around there. Okay, um, let's see. Padding. 15 pixels. All right. And that's probably good for this, just this section. Now let's move on to the controls. Um, this is going to be display flex. And each of the buttons is going to have a flex grow of one. So they expand to fit the area there. Uh, they're just going to have a margin of... Uh, five pixels, zero. Oh wait, uh, zero five pixels, so left and right, and then on the bottom four pixel margin because I'm going to pop this little bit of code in here, give them the same box shadow, and so the margin on the bottom here is going to offset the box shadow on the bottom there. And let's see how that looks. Okay, I want to remove the border and the outline. Outline. No border, no outline. Um, font size. I'd um, say 16 pixels, that's usually good. Color, color of white. Okay, and we have to give them each, oh, uh, give it a padding first, too. Padding, uh, five pixels on the top and bottom, and zero left and right. And that looks good. Now we have to change this background color so you can actually see what the buttons say. We're going to change that down here because they're each going to be different colors. So the start button is going to have a background color of a lightish green. Uh, so red green, blue, like that, and we're going to change it on hover.
to something just a little bit lighter. Like that. I'm going to do the same thing in here, or similar thing, just different colors. The stop button is going to be red. Okay, and the reset button is going to be a purple. Like that. And there's our buttons. Oh, I'm going to got to do a couple more things here. Uh, give it a cursor pointer and uh, what else? Oh, yes. Font weight bold. Like that. All right. But clicking them doesn't do anything, so we're going to add a click effect. So active that when they're being clicked. Let's see. We're going to remove the bottom margin. So margin bottom 0. And give it 4 pixels of margin on the top instead. Margin top 4 pixels. And remove the box box shadow like that so that way when we click them it looks like they go down and I'm going to add kind of a more or less global transition here so whoops there we go transition all 0 0.15 seconds ease out and now our buttons go down when they're clicked. That looks really nice. OK, now we can move on to styling this and then the JavaScript. So let's see. A font size of 50 pixels, maybe. Font family sans serif text align center. OK, um, maybe a little bit of margin on the top. All right, and then this nifty little bit of code, not last child after content colon. So we're adding a colon after each of these elements, but not the last one, so not this one. So you see what that looks like. There you go. Colon after this one. Colon after eh. Colon after this one right there, but not after that one. Because it's not because that is the last child. Alright, so we can be done with the CSS and move on to the JavaScript. Okay. Each of the stopwatches is going to be stored, or we're going to grab those from the document. There, document, get elements by class name, stopwatch. Okay, and then loop through each of those. Like this. Okay, and here we go. Var. We're going to do a whole bunch of variables here. Current timer 0. That's holding the current time in the timer, which starts at 0. Counts up. Then we have um, interval. That's holding the set interval reference so that keeps track of what's timing the timer <laughs> kind of and then last update time new date dot get time see how that's used in just a bit let's initialize the rest of our variables start uh, start button is s dot query selector button dot start um, we have three buttons so that's stop stop and 
this does work in this editor. Reset. There we go. All right. And now the minutes, seconds, and centiseconds. Mins s dot query selector span dot minutes. And cents, seconds, and centiseconds. All right, there's all our variables, and we can move on. All right, so I'm going to make this function here function. Um, if this is a helper function called pad, it takes a number, and if the num and it's going to make sure that the that it's going to return a string that is two characters long. So it's going to pad the number with zeros. So if I give it a zero, it'll give me zero, zero. If I give it a one, it'll give me zero, one. If I give it the number 12, it'll give me one, two as a string. So return zero, zero plus n dot sub string negative two. Go backwards two there. Grab the last two characters off of that string with that function. Okay, then we'll make our update function. Function, if I can spell it right. Update. And var now equals new date dot get time. And delta t, change in time, equals now minus last update time okay and then down here we'll set last update time equal to now and we'll do everything in between here so first add to the current timer the change in the time and then we're going to have to update the contents of the minutes the seconds and the centiseconds so, I am just going to stick the current timer time in a date object so that parses the minutes and seconds and stuff really, really easy for us so we don't have to do all kinds of complicated math. So our time equals new date current timer. Okay, and then mins.innerHTML equals pad time dot get minutes okay then seconds and seconds and this is milliseconds but we divide it by 10, and then we have to round down because it's centiseconds. Sense, like that, and that is our update function. Okay, then we'll make our start function. Start timer. If we don't have a timer running. Whoops. If we don't have a timer running already, then we'll start a new one. Interval equals set interval update as fast as we can. And uh, better set that above. Last update time equals new date dot get time. Okay, I think that's good for our start function. Make our stop timer function. This is going to clear interval, interval, and interval equals zero then. And finally, our function reset timer. First, it stops the timer. Then we set 
current timer equal to zero. And we have to clear each of the display fields. So mins, mins dot inner HTML equals seconds dot inner HTML inner HTML equals sense sense inner HTML equals pad zero which pad zero is the same as zero zero okay now let's attach our handlers and this thing should be ready to roll so on the start button Add event listener click uh, start timer stop dot add event listener click stop timer and finally reset add event listener click reset timer all right, let's see if this thing works. Start button works, timer's running. Stop button works. Reset button clears it, and we can start the timer all over again. All right, and that is how you make a pretty simple timer in CSS and JavaScript. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial, hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe, my name is Jacob, and have a good one.